The last time I went on a trip to 3D scan this old cabin in the Norwegian Arctic, it ended up being a ton of fun. So this time I wanted to step it up a bit and capture a piece of Norwegian culture. If only Norway had this rich and vibrant Viking history. Oh wait, it does. I'm going to show you my process, my workflow, the challenges and mistakes I made throughout this project, because nothing ever goes 100% according to plan, especially when you need to rely on the weather. I do want to thank the people at Capturing Reality for sponsoring this video and for making this kind of project possible. I wanted to capture a piece of Viking history because, God, it's so cool. I opted to travel to Urnes Stave Church, which was built around 1130 AD, making it almost 900 years old. And these ornate carvings predate it, dating to about 1070 AD. Around the time these carvings were made, Vikings were still fighting in modern day England, which just blows my mind. So we set off from Oslo and drove seven hours to the Norwegian west coast to Songdal, which is about 20 minutes from the ferry that crosses the fjord to the church. Why did we go all the way out there? Regular viewers of the channel will know, but for those of you who are new here, it's for a process called photogrammetry, which is how you 3D scan something by shooting hundreds or thousands of photos of an object, feed that data set into an app like Reality Capture, which will use those photos to generate a high resolution 3D model of whatever you like. But here's where things got a little tricky. We had two days to shoot and get the necessary data set for the scan. And naturally, the day we arrived, it was pouring rain, because of course it was. Now the thing about photogrammetry is overcast days are a good thing. They are preferable because you don't want harsh sunlight. Reason being, whatever lighting is around your subject will be baked into the textures of your 3D model later. You want a soft, even lighting because that will make your life a lot easier down the line when it comes to time to relight your scene in Unreal Engine. If you have direct sunlight baked into your textures, but you want to create an overcast scene in Unreal, or you want your sun to come from a different direction, you can imagine why things would look a little bit weird. Overcast, good. Pouring rain, not good, because rain equals wet, and wet equals shiny reflections, which is bad. Bad because reflective surfaces will negatively impact the quality of your scan, giving you lumpier results. No bueno. Now, this is the Norwegian West Coast. It famously rains a lot here. But we had to hope that the next day would be a little bit better. Since I was already there though, I thought I would try to make the most of it by shooting a cross-polarized scan of the carving. Cross-polarization consists of using a powerful ring flash and two polarizing filters in order to a remove any reflections, but also ensuring a flat, even lighting to get the cleanest possible scan, which would help mitigate the impact of rain. But, oh no, oh no, I had one job. Even though I used fresh batteries, the switch of my flash transmitter flicked on in a bag during the trip and the battery drained. So that was cool. On day two, however, we got up at 6 a.m. to take the very first ferry across the fjord at seven, which gave me about three hours to scan the entire stave church because by 10.15 or so, the next ferry arrived and the place would be swarmed by tourists. They would be in the way, I would be in their way, so I had to work fast. The process of photogrammetry is often more or less the same. You go around your subject, take as many photos from every angle as you can, and hope for the best. Ensure a constant exposure, lock your white balance, and shoot raw photos, not JPEG. For the church, I ended up with over 2,000 photos. I figured it's better to have too many then not enough, especially when you're scanning something this awesome. If you want to try 3D scanning for yourself, I've made a few dedicated tutorials where I hold your hand every step of the way, like how I scan this old building in depth. You'll find a link down below along with any other tutorials I mention, things you might find useful to follow along with this video. Now, because the front part of the church here has lots of nooks and crannies and pillars like this, it can be pretty tricky to scan. So in order to get a better result, I got even closer I used a three meter tall light stand to mount the camera on with a remote trigger to get the camera higher than I would normally be able to reach. 
Now, in a perfect world, I would have loved to scan the entire church this way, but it is a lot slower and time was running out. I got to work. Now, of course, I knew I wanted to render a close-up shot of these incredible carvings that have been perfectly preserved over nearly a thousand years. So I whipped out my cross polarization setup again with new batteries. Having the flash helped a lot here because both the church and the carvings have been coated in a thick layer of pitch black tar, which protects the wood from the cold, the sun, and the salty ocean air. But such a dark surface is extremely difficult to scan because you need a ton of light to get a proper exposure in camera. And on dark overcast days in Norway, there's already not much light to work with. So the flash, highly beneficial. If you're interested, I have a dedicated cross polarization tutorial link down below. Usually what's really tricky about shooting out on location like this is unless you have a beefy laptop or a portable workstation, you kind of just need to hope that the photos you took are good enough because there's no way to tell if everything is okay until you get home. And if you made a mistake, like every photo is blurry or you missed a spot, it's too late. This time around though, I did have a beefy laptop, but that's a topic for another video coming soon. So after taking all of the photos and getting back home, it's now time to prep the photos, see how our data set turned out and what the 3D model looks like. The first thing I always do is sort through all of the photos one by one in Photo Mechanic to delete the blurry images. There is no point in using blurry ones. If there's a bit of camera shake or something, they will only deteriorate the quality of the generated model. Photo Mechanic is blazing fast for sorting through tons of raw files, which is why I use it. Then with the images called, I bring the good ones into Adobe Lightroom, which is where I do some subtle adjustments like reducing highlights, lifting shadows, tiny bit of sharpening and noise reduction. You're not trying to make the images pretty, you're just trying to make them as flat looking as possible to get better texture data later. I can apply changes to one image and then sync it across all other images with the click of a button here. With those images processed, I can then export the raw files as JPEG or TIFF and drag and drop those into Reality Capture, which is where we will be generating the model and its textures. With the images dropped into Reality Capture, you can simply hit the F6 key and it will begin aligning those images and generate a point cloud of your model. And here you could already get a good idea of how things are going to look. It kind of feels like magic. Then I'm going to generate the model in high detail, which uses the full resolution of my photos, which used to take a considerable amount of time. And to be fair, it still does, but the latest updates to Reality Capture have drastically improved the mesh generation time for which I am very thankful. Is the scan perfect? Absolutely not. Some parts are a little bit lumpy for reasons that are both my own fault and for reasons completely out of my control. Is it clean enough for my renders though? Uh, yeah. Despite being in very unforgiving conditions, the scan turned out spectacularly well. I also generated a separate scan of the carvings on their own, those that were shot with cross polarization for the close up shot I had in mind. So I got two separate models to work with. The process of generating the second mesh here was exactly the same. Align the images and generate the mesh. With the models generated, we also get the textures for free by hitting the unwrap and texture button here. And before you know it, you have a fully textured 3D model now ready for export. It's crazy to me the Vikings even had electrical cables and fire extinguishers. Man, they were ahead of their time. Now, I often get asked in the comments why I don't just 3D model a church like this by hand in Maya or Blender or 3ds Max or whatever. Sure, you absolutely could do that, but it would take seasoned artists weeks of work to get the same level of detail. The wear and tear that a thousand years of exposure to the elements brings. But there's also a huge amount of satisfaction in capturing and immortalizing historic artifacts like this. Now, Reality Capture is completely free to use, but you are charged per megapixel only for the models you want to export using their PPI credit system. The high resolution scan of the carvings, for example, would cost about $4 to export. But for the next two weeks though, you can get 50% off your purchase of 3,500 PPI credits by using the code William50 at checkout. Now we can export the model and the textures out of Reality Capture and bring them into Unreal Engine 5, set up the material by bringing in the textures and we're ready to get started. As always, the first part of starting any environment in Unreal Engine 
its reference and blocking out the shot. Really placing the foundations and building blocks and establishing the composition. I love using Pure Ref to build a collection of images that capture the mood I'm going for. It's really important to not just make things based on memory alone. Use reference. It will help you. Now I knew I would need some mountains for the shot as well. So I managed to get a hold of some height map data from the Norwegian cartography website and use that data in a program called Gaia to generate some mountains that I could place in the scene. They get the mountains that are actually from the area the church was scanned in. Now to be clear, I'm not trying to recreate the surrounding area one-to-one. -one. I'm absolutely embellishing the shot in Unreal for the sake of making something pretty. But I still like the idea of having something based on the real place. I added another landscape in Unreal and sculpted that to shape the ground. You'll see very quickly we already have something in place. And from there, it's all about populating the area with detail. Using Megascans trees, I was able to quickly make a forest using the new procedural tools in Unreal. But I wanted something to lead the eye up to the stave church, so a path leading up to it felt like the right thing to do. From there, stone walls were added with the spline tool. I felt it would add some nice detail. It's pretty crazy how big of a difference adding some foliage ground cover makes. If your scene feels empty or if you think something is missing, just scatter some bushes and grass around and it won't take long for your shot to feel lush and full of life. Now, about the lighting. I use a plugin called Ultra Dynamic Sky, or UDS for short. And when it comes to exterior lighting, it makes the whole process very easy to art direct. Because I'm going for an overcast day, lighting this shot could not be any easier. There is one light source, the sky. So by cranking up the cloud cover setting, we can get some nice, soft, diffuse lighting. When it comes to the general composition, framing, and overall feeling of the shot, it is so important to add foreground elements, like you see here on the left and right. Adding trees in such a way that it frames the shot as a kind of natural vignetting of sorts, this may seem insignificant, but it is that kind of thing that makes a huge world of difference between a mediocre shot and a good one. That transition between the darker tree tunnel here and the bright, airy meadow out there ties the whole thing together. I cannot stress enough how important that is. To add that last touch to the scene, and a bit of a shameless plug, I used Easy Fog, which is a tool I made and is available on the Epic Marketplace, link down below. It makes adding some mist and fog to your level way easier. I had some perfect reference on location during the shoot, and that there is the vibe I was trying to go for in Unreal. So by placing Easy Fog into the level, I can quickly and easily art direct the look I want in just a few minutes. Occluding some of the distant trees with fog really helps bring the scene to life. Now a bit of a fun tip for those of you using Unreal, sometimes I like to use this console variable because it can really give you some nicer, deeper shadows in your scene. It doesn't always magically make everything better, but it often does. You'll see, setting up an environment like this isn't complicated. It's just a matter of placing trees and foliage and rocks in an aesthetic manner, shaping the ground in a way that feels good. There's no real rule or process to it. It's all about having an eye for what you think looks good. Again, reference really helps here. Now, that is the establishing shot. But this church scan turned out so good, I had way too much fun just rendering out a bunch of other shots of the church. So I made some new camera sequences. I set up a new close-up shot of the carvings because I had to. Made a new camera and also rendered this other shot, which was based on real video footage that we filmed on location. As for this shot here, I figured I'd share a trick I love to use when I'm lighting. Simply by placing a large cube with a dark material on it, and use that to block the light coming from behind the camera. This is an old trick used by lighters on film sets. It helps you shape and bend the light to create a nicer, more desirable look. Take a look here. I love the dark backlit look I'm giving the tree in the foreground, but see what happens when I hide the cube or move it away? It looks much flatter and less interesting. A darker foreground here helped the scene feel a little bit moodier, it's an easy way to control your lighting a lot better. Now comes the time to render your shots out of Unreal using the movie render queue. And for those of you wondering what my render settings are, I have a free render settings guide available on Gumroad, link below. This will tell you everything you need to know about my render settings in Unreal. 
I'm gonna render out these shots in 4K, and by hitting the render button here, we're now ready to move on to the last and most satisfying part of the entire process, color grading. Color grading adds that last little bit of oomph to your renders. It's never huge changes, but it's that extra little bit of polish that helps. Things like lens distortion, film grain, contrast, shadow and highlight tweaks, or other lens effects like chromatic aberration. I have a dedicated tutorial on color grading and resolve down below, so I won't bore you with the specifics, but really there's no magical settings when it comes to color grading. Don't bother trying to copy mine because it's all entirely dependent on your shots. My settings might not look good on your renders. It's also entirely subjective and up to your own personal taste. You might not like what I like. I just wanted to show you my process. For example, take a look at this clip right here, which is real footage. Let's break down what we're looking at here. The rain on the lens isn't really distinct. It's just a, a blurry smudge. Because the raindrops are physically so close to the camera sensor, they are completely out of focus. That makes that effect very easy to reproduce in post. I just made a very quick blurry mask in Resolve here in a Fusion page and overlaid that on top of the shot. Easy peasy, rain on lens look. I find it adds a nice touch because, well, when you point a camera up at the sky on a rainy day, rain is going to hit that lens no matter how hard you try to shield it. So it's those little details that can add a lot of realism to your renders. From there, I graded each of the four shots and here's a quick before and after. Like I said, I'm not doing any major changes here, just some curves adjustments for contrast, added a slightly filmic look, I harmonized the colors a little bit, added a bit of film grain, and that, friends, is how I made these shots. Everything I did here is perfectly doable by any of you. If I can do it, so can you. You'll find more dedicated step-by-step -step tutorial to everything I've done here in this video, from photogrammetry, lighting, rendering, color grading, in the description below, so you've got everything you need to get started with creating your own world. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, leave a comment down below if this is the kind of thing you'd like to see more of. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and as always, folks, happy rendering. Do it again. No, that, the, the, ca again. the, the camera. <laughs> <laughs> the, the pure professionalism. I did it, they, they do it again, they're like, okay. <laughs>